Is homesteading right for you? It sure isn't easy. It can be pretty gosh darn hard. Should you do it or not? Live happy, fun, loving, and carefree. So, homesteading can be really hard. And I just want to be truthful and honest with you because, like I'm always saying, it's all about living happy, fun, loving, and carefree. But the reality is, you know, to be 100% honest, it isn't, you know, living a good life doesn't necessarily mean living an easy life. So I just want to be straight with you and come out and give you some pointers. So let's talk about five things that are about homesteading and is it easy, is it hard? Should you even be thinking about doing it in your situation? And if you hang on with me and stay till the end, I'm gonna give you a, a bonus surprise. Don't you make me pull this car over. I mean it. <laughs> so the thing about homesteading, you know, it isn't little house on the prairie lifestyle. It, it just, you know, it's nice to think that it's it's this utopian, oh, I'll just be outside and I'll just lounge around and I'll collect my chicken eggs and I'll pick my tomatoes from the garden and, and everything will be really wonderful. It, it is a hard life, but in my opinion, it's a satisfying life. But we still got to decide if it's the right life for you. So that, that first thing to think about is Homesteading definitely isn't cheap. It's not inexpensive. We pay about $6 a dozen for our eggs, but they're farm fresh eggs from our chickens. And we have friends and neighbors and that that beg us for eggs all the time. That, you know, they really like our eggs and now they can't go back to store bought eggs. And it's the same thing for vegetables from your garden and that. Once you pick your own tomatoes and pick your own peppers and pick your own cucumbers and, and start eating them, you know, in your meals, it's pretty darn hard to go back to the cardboard taste and stuff that they sell in the grocery stores. Making sense? not being in control and going with the flow. Here's a perfect example that just happened to us. Our car, our vehicle, the battery failed in it and we needed a new battery and there was some other work that needed to be done on the engine and that that I've been procrastinating on. So we had to take it into the dealership and it cost us just over $700. We didn't plan on spending $700 on our vehicle that day. And we had to borrow the $700 from our money that we've put away to pay our property taxes, which are due shortly after the first of the year. Always a fun time to have to have a big bill, January, February, after Christmas and December and Thanksgiving and all of that. So, you know, that's just the kind of thing that you've got to be prepared to deal with. Another thing if you're going to be a homesteader, so item number two, is you've got to be what we tend to call a jack of all trades. And one of the things that I do, you know, you do everything around the homestead. You do your own electrical, you do your own plumbing, you, you fix things. I put a new roof on the house after we moved here. And unfortunately, we've got a, a leak in one corner of the roof and over the bathroom. I just wanted to get it done because I'd started on the front and worked all the way around and I was on the last corner and I just wanted to finish it. And now I'm gonna have to get up there and tear that corner of the roof apart and redo it. And, and that's just part of life is making your plans in pencil because you've just got to always be able to adapt and, and do projects and things that you thought you'd done them once and that you were done. Just yesterday, I was heard the incubator, the humidifier running. It monitors the humidity and it's got a little water pump and it pumps water into the incubator to hold the humidity at the proper level. And I heard the pump running and running and running and I go into the room where the incubator is and the hose on the top sprung a leap leak and it was dripping. 
and I'm like, oh great, we've got three trays of eggs in the incubator, and I had to right then take the pump apart and go in the closet and find the box of the incubator supplies and get the hoses out and you know and it took me a while to do that but that's the kind of things that you have to do when you are homesteading is be adaptable go with the flow you can make plans but you better be able to do different things and go with whatever you have to do at the moment right so that was number two another thing is skipping fancy stuff. In the real normal world, there's like an item to do every project, a tool for every job. And we learned this when we lived on the sailboat, but you want things that can multitask. You just can't be buying every single thing that you might want or, or need. And I get a lot of feedback from people, like I repaired the barbed wire fence. I don't know if you can see it way over in the background there. But, you know, I made a video about repairing the fence with things that you happen to have available. Kind of a MacGyvery sort of thing. Sure, it's nice to have the fence stretcher and, and all the proper tools and the, and the fence pliers and everything, but what happens if you don't have all that stuff? So I showed how to repair the fence using vice grips and a come along. And, and things that you may have readily available. And people would say, you know, you should have the right tool for the right job. So that's number three. When you live on a homestead, you live on the homestead. If you're a person that likes traveling, going on vacations, at the drop of a hat, going to visit other people, going to you know, stay in hotels in, at the beach or whatever, and you like to do other things, homesteading might not be for you. We don't go anywhere together other than run into the grocery store for, you know, a couple of hours or something like that. When we go visit relatives, when we go visit our kids, our, our new grandkids, if, if one of us wants to go, you know, visit somebody that's getting married in a wedding, whatever it is, one of us goes and the other one stays home to take care of the homestead because of the chickens and the dogs and the cats and the gardens and things. You just can't leave that stuff. And sure, you can make arrangements with, with neighbors or friends or that, or if you do have family that lives close to where you homestead. But that is really something that if you're a person that really, really likes gallivanting around and you got an RV or whatever and you want to be on the go all the time, you may want to think twice about being on a homestead. That might not be something that you can do. And the last thing that you've got to deal with on a homestead is basically it's death. Whether it's intentional or unintentional. And it could just be bugs eating your vegetables in your garden, eating all your berries, you know, worms getting in your tomatoes. You know, you could have a flock of chickens and one night a fox or a raccoon or, or something gets in there and, and wipes them out. You may just be using rabbits or chickens or whatever for your meals. And those kind, you know, so you're doing it intentionally then. But that is, that's something that you really have to be accepting of is, you know, that number five reason is that death is real on the homestead. And if you're a person that doesn't like to see that or deal with that, you walk outside and see a, you know, chicken that's been gotten by a hawk or something laying in your front yard. <sighs> Homesteading might not be for you. Sorry about that. You know, is it gonna work for you? Think about the things that you like to do and don't like to do and be honest with yourself. And like right now, the sun's really popping out and I probably have a, a blue face I had my camera and equipment set up about 10 minutes ago and it started pouring rain and I had to run everything into the barn so it didn't get wet. I'm way behind on my projects. I don't have firewood put up for next year. It, it's just, it's completely flooded here. It, it's, it's so frustrating, but I wouldn't trade it. So the special bonus thing, if you are deciding to homestead, if you're deciding to make a change in your life, 
if you've watched all the way till now, is the thing that I would say is just jump in with both feet and do it. People say, read books, study up on it, talk to other people, make a plan, have goals, do all that. You know, that's all great and fine and dandy, but my opinion, the best thing to do is just rip the Band-Aid off and go for it. Burn the bridge and, and move to your homestead if that's what you want to do and learn as you go. Experience is a hard teacher because she gives the exam first and the lesson after. An analogy is having kids. You can read all the books that you want, you can talk to all your friends and relatives, and but until you have that baby in your hands and you're taking care of it yourself and you can't put it back, <laughs> is you, you just learn as you go. And go slow, take your time, be methodical about things, but my advice, my bonus surprise again is just jump right in with both feet and go for it and learn as you go because if you hesitate if you wait to try to do it until you have all your ducks in a row if you're gonna have ducks it, it'll never happen burn that bridge and go remember you're not in control life just happens when you're busy making plans watch another video Subscribe if you're not subscribed. I really do want you living happy, fun-loving, and carefree. And red pill, blue pill, you pick. Make the decision. Don't look back. Be happy.